so much for your willingness to to join on a Friday noon. Um, really appreciate it. Um, as most of you um, may know, Dan Holland is an associate professor of entrepreneurship and strategy um, here at Utah State at the Huntsman School of Business. And his research really centers on entrepreneurial decision-making, ethics, um, and persistence. Um, and he has taught a variety um, of entrepreneurship and strategy courses here. Um, and he's actually been with USU for the last 13 years. Um, he received his PhD from Indiana University and his MBA and um, BS in engineering from Brigham Young University. Um, and before he um, joined academia, he also worked for um, several companies in engineering, marketing, um, and various management roles in the high-tech industry. Um, and he really misses traveling, um, especially spending time with his family, playing pickleball, um, and um, yeah, watching people. And um, he told me he was in the market for new interest during the pandemic um, so if you have any exciting um, ideas please feel free to share it with him um, and also with me personally I do miss all these things as well <laughs> um, so please join me in welcoming um, Dan Holland today for his presentation on learn twice thank you thank you Ancha uh, I appreciate uh, um, Travis and Shelly and Ancha for uh, giving me this invitation to uh, share a little bit with you today and thank you for taking the time to join. Uh, uh, I really appreciate that. Uh, I, we talked a little about this before we started, but it is during lunchtime. We did that intentionally. We thought uh, maybe during lunch you could have some little background noise. Feel free to uh, shut off your video and eat away if you want. Uh, I have to apologize though, because uh, I didn't eat before doing this and my stomach was just grumbling. So it may do that. So, so don't eat in front of me because uh, uh, it'll just make me hungrier, I'm afraid. Um, but uh, I uh, am really excited to talk to you about this uh, uh, initiative that uh, I've been involved with uh, over the last uh, little while, a uh, few years, I guess. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, to start, I want to, uh, well, let's, uh, let's talk about this phrase, to teach is to learn twice. Uh, it is, uh, it may have a little bit different meaning for all of us, and, uh, and I want you to think about it a little bit, and I, I want to actually get some feedback from the group uh, about this, and, and uh, just think about, say, this last semester, or the last uh, year, whatever you want, and, and uh, think a little about your teaching experiences, and, uh, and if you don't mind, please, in the chat, uh, share uh, one or two things that uh, you feel like you've learned uh, from your teaching experiences during this time. I'm going to pull up uh, my chat so I can see some of the responses. I'll give you a minute to reflect and think about it as well. Yeah, a couple of you are touching on uh, uh, realizing that uh, we never know everything. So we're always learning, right? Uh, uh, we learn uh, things that we just didn't realize that we didn't even know. Uh, teaching online is not the same as teaching face-to-face. -face. I'm sure we all have learned a lot about that experience over these last uh, a uh, little while, and I know I have, and I've had many flops and failures along the way and, uh, and other small successes. Uh, when students have a chance to teach in the class, they learn the material much better than listening to me talk the whole time. Uh, I love that, that's a great insight. Uh, that really hits the whole to teach is to learn twice. Uh, you learn the material and by teaching, we just learn it at a deeper level, don't we? Um, there's always room to learn more. I learned, uh, let's see, how interested in teaching more online and getting better at it. Yeah, um, that's happened for me too. Uh, um, I, I never particularly loved my online experiences and I've uh, decided I needed an attitude change. And, and by jumping into it, it's, uh, 
it's helped me uh, uh, really enjoy that experience much more. Kindness is key. Uh, yeah, that's a, a beautiful uh, uh, learning lesson, uh, uh, being able to have a little empathy and kindness uh, for the students, and what's happening in their lives. Um, students want to do well. Uh, sometimes teaching comes second, being, coming, or being a person comes first. Uh, let's see, students' questions, even those that come from confusion, I get to see the topic in a different light. Love that. So, so, so many times uh, in our minds, I mean, we see it the way we see it, and we've really dug into it, and just seeing some of those questions and blink faces and confusion helps us uh, remember that we weren't always in that position and, and see new and different things. We, we got to be flexible. Uh, we, uh, let's see, by teaching, you do both content and process. It also provides opportunities to reflect. Being creative with assignments it really inspires students to engage. Thank you so much. And keep sharing those because uh, you can go read them and, and whatnot. But I, I, I really appreciate it. And uh, I share many of those lessons and uh, uh, have learned those as, uh, just like you have. And, uh, and I love that uh, you're willing to share that with others because uh, the more we share, the more we can learn or the quicker we can learn. So... This whole concept to me uh, has really been uh, top of mind uh, for me about the learning experience of teaching. Uh, some of you may have had similar experience to me here uh, where uh, when I uh, went and got my PhD, uh, this is kind of how it uh, worked as far as my training. It was probably 95% or more was about research, right? It was about training me to be a researcher. I think we had one two credit hour class about teaching and then they threw me in the classroom. In fact, they, they probably threw me in the classroom before I had that two credit hour class, but very little discussion about teaching. But then I came to USU and my role statement said 50% teaching, 40% research and 10% service. Now, we've all had different experiences. Some of you come from industry, some uh, come from different backgrounds and may have had different levels of training, but a lot of us have not had much training about teaching, and I was definitely one of those. Uh, and, uh, and I learned by uh, trial and error and uh, by watching others and participating in a lot of different things. Uh, but as I thought about that and, and thought about the role that I have of, you know, half of my role is about teaching, I really wanted to be better at teaching, and I wanted to figure out ways to uh, improve and, uh, and help others to improve as well. And, uh, and as I thought about uh, learning about teaching and learning from teaching, I, I, I started to think, okay, what are the things that I could do that might uh, move the needle a little bit, that might help uh, uh, here in my department, uh, this started as kind of a department level initiative, or here in the business school, or here at the university, or here in the broader academic community, what can we do to help each other teach better? Um, some of the things that I thought of, okay, where do I spend time? I spend a lot of time searching for information, searching for material, searching for exercises, searching for content to use in my class, uh, searching uh, for methods uh, uh, that would help me improve. And, and so the time it, it takes to search alone is really significant. And I thought maybe there's something we could do to, to gather some of those things and make it a little easier to find some of those things. Um, I thought about sharing. Uh, um, I, I definitely learn from others and, and there is some sharing going on uh, in our department, in our school but not as much as I thought uh, uh, we could probably do and that I could benefit a lot from, from learning from others and seeing uh, um, how they teach and, uh, and uh, modeling their methods and whatnot. And, uh, and um, so I felt like that was a significant place that maybe we could improve. And then just building a learning community. I've, I've had the privilege of teaching connections uh, the last uh, 
uh, two or three years and uh, in connections uh, with those incoming freshmen, we talk about building learning communities. And, uh, and I love that concept. And, and I think it's uh, really impactful for us as faculty if we build these uh, uh, learn twice communities, uh, uh, communities around the subject matter that help us learn and, and uh, improve our knowledge of the content but also communities about uh, uh, teaching. And, and those communities should include our students because they are uh, obviously a very important part of that uh, um, process. And so, uh, so I thought, okay, what could we do to maybe improve community as well? And uh, I uh, didn't really want to duplicate what was already out there. We have all sorts of great resources, including here at the university. ETE has been fantastic, and I've loved watching it grow over the last several years uh, as they started with conferences and created all this great content about teaching. Uh, and the, the city group in general, uh, uh, instructional design and, and helping us improve our teaching, some really great resources. Then there's uh, you know, great resources within all our disciplines, different associations or uh, academies that we're members of that we can learn a lot about the content or have great uh, uh, teaching uh, uh, content as well. And then of course, there's the internet, uh, which uh, is often uh, you know, the first place any of us go, open up a, a browser and a Google search and search for whatever it is we're looking for. And that's just so much data that it's uh, overload for us sometimes. But all of those things are very valuable and, uh, and I didn't want to just go add on to that or, or try to uh, replace it in some way. I wanted to try to think of ways that we might be able to complement or, or uh, you know, pull the best things of all of those and just make it a little easier, a little more efficient for faculty uh, in our department and school. And uh, so as I did that, I went to uh, Jim Davis, my department head, and, uh, and approached him. And, and, and to his credit, uh, um, uh, he was willing to let me uh, change my focus a little bit from some of uh, some of the research time that I was doing to focus on developing this kind of research uh, about teaching and to try to pull together some uh, resources for our faculty that might help uh, improve. And so I've had a lot of great support from uh, administration. Uh, with that uh, faculty as well, I, I, uh, I really tried to seek out faculty input, uh, sending out surveys, uh, uh, trying to understand what they might like and what might help them in their teaching. And, uh, and that's been really uh, um, great to have their input. Uh, I just wanted to mention like uh, Shara Gibbons is our webmaster in the Huntsman School and she has been fantastic to work with. And I could not have done uh, any of this without her. Uh, our team needed her expertise in creating the site, for example. Uh, Tyler Fisher, we've got Tyler uh, uh, on. I think I saw him, yes, he was in the kitchen, that's right. He joined us. Tyler is just one of uh, many students that have worked with me on this project. And uh, he's a graduate assistant, uh, master's student, getting uh, his master's in uh, human resources. And, uh, and, uh, and he has been a, a great addition to the team, but, but students in general, and he's representing all these students, uh, it's been really impactful to have students because I wanted to get their perspective. What things do they think teachers need to hear? So they have a chance to go out and find content that they think uh, the faculty need to see or hear that might improve their classes. And that's uh, been really great to uh, have the students on the team. Um, I just wanted to give Tyler a second to chime in if he has. Tyler, do you have anything uh, uh, that uh, you've learned from this experience or anything that, uh, that you might want to share about uh, being involved in, in Learn Twice? Yeah, it's been a really great opportunity. Uh, as Dan mentioned, the research of articles can take a lot of time away from the professor. And I should know because that's been almost my job for the past two years with Dan is researching articles. Um, it, it's just an awesome way for not only myself to learn, but to kind of help uh, further the learning and education of those uh, current students and ones that are, will be joining Utah State in the next coming years as well. It's been a great experience. Thanks, Tyler. 
Tyler is kind of uh, the editor right now. He's our experienced uh, uh, faculty or uh, student uh, leader and uh, is helping some of the others on our team. So I just wanted to make sure that uh, uh, you know, all these people uh, get the credit uh, they deserve because they have worked really hard on this. And uh, um, so I want to uh, just show you uh, kind of one of the first experiments that we had, and that's to create a, a website uh, um, of different resources. And so if you go to learntwice.org, um, uh, it'll pull up this website hosted through the Huntsman School. And, uh, and you see that we've broken it down into two main components. One is, is classroom resources. So it's, it's uh, content that might help. Uh, and we focus on business school faculty here uh, in order to limit uh, the scope of the content. Uh, but uh, we've created uh, um, sections for news stories. And I'm going to, uh, let me pull over the website here. Well, actually, uh, so I can uh, link to it. For example, uh, um, our team will go out and look at uh, recent news stories and then try to summarize those into smaller pieces. So we all often uh, read the news and look for things that might be relevant for our classes. And what this does is it's a great place to kind of park some of those great news stories that uh, a faculty member finds. So if they find a story that they think, oh, that would be really great, uh, this would be a great, uh, then they can come in and say, hey, why don't you add this to the site? Or if a student on the team goes and finds something, uh, uh, you know, what uh, automaker can challenge Tesla? And then uh, we try to summarize it down into uh, a paragraph so a faculty member can quickly look at it. Now this one's a video and it breaks down where you can find different pieces of the video. And then uh, we uh, add a couple of key points that may be relevant to a class, for example, and, uh, and even some questions that could be asked. So news stories cases uh, is one piece. Uh, video clips, uh, we're always searching for good video content, uh, right? So uh, we, uh, um, this again, any faculty member that finds a video that they may wanna use at some time, it's great for them to send it in and say, hey, would you please add this to the site? And uh, if you're like me, I find all this content and I usually email myself so that I remember or I put it in a folder and it's spread out all over the place and I can rarely find it again. So this has become kind of a storage place for me where I can go put content. And, uh, um, and so there's all sorts of great videos that uh, uh, we try to keep them short, break them down, show some things that uh, may work. So. We had a faculty member not too long ago request uh, some videos about uh, cognitive biases and, uh, and uh, the way we view things. And, and they found, uh, so the students went out and looked and, uh, and this is uh, uh, actually several different links to videos about uh, awareness and how uh, we may not be as aware as, aware as we think. Uh, let's see, I'm going to, I think that I did not, Press the optimize. So let me do that and share this again. And I'll just show you uh, one video. Uh, you've all probably seen the video of uh, the moonwalking bear, uh, but then this adds a couple others. Let's see if I. that could be used in a class. Clearly, somebody in this room murdered Lord Smythe, who, at precisely 3.34 this afternoon, was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the master bedroom. I was buttering his lordship's scones below stairs, sir. Why, I was planting my petunias in the potting shed. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. But, but how did you know? Madam, as any horticulturist will tell you, one does not plant petunias until May is out. Take her away. That's right, madam. 
It's just a matter of observation. The real question is how observant were you? And uh, action. Clearly, somebody in this room murdered Lord Smythe, who, at precisely 3.34 this afternoon, was brutally bludgeoned to death with a blunt instrument. I want each of you to tell me your whereabouts at precisely the time that this dastardly deed took place. I was polishing the brass in the master bedroom. I was buttering his lordship's scones below stairs, sir. Well, I was planting my petunias in the potting shed. Constable, arrest Lady Smythe. Okay. So there's just an example of a little video that can be used in class uh, um, that uh, uh, took some time to go find and, and that uh, the faculty can then come in here and look among video clips and hopefully uh, be used in, in class. And so we've got, uh, uh, you know, a bunch of different video clips. We've got uh, tools and technology, um, uh, different uh, tools that uh, uh, different faculty have used in class that uh, they can come and put a, a little summary out here. Uh, classroom exercises, uh, uh, the awareness test ended up uh, under multiple categories, as you see, uh, uh, activity-based learning, pivot, tell, excel, tutorial, and so forth. Um, so we're always trying to add content and, uh, and it's always a chicken or the egg thing uh, people don't want to really come to a site unless it has content, and it's hard to get content unless people come to the site. Uh, but these are all different types of materials within or that help teaching and, and try to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of business school factory, faculty as they uh, look for content for their classes. Uh, then we've got uh, learn about teaching. So uh, this section is, is really about strategies and methods, about uh, assessment and feedback, about trying to uh, um, improve our teaching, uh, looking for different ways. And so we've linked to content that uh, uh, USU uh, uh, has put out about all the different things that we're working on, the different modes of instruction. So it's great to have that content and, and link directly to that. There's other things from external sources like uh, case teaching online, how to do that. And Harvard obviously is known for that. Uh, online learning can still be social. So this article, uh, uh, we open it up and uh, there's a short summary about the article. There's a link to the original article. Uh, and then it uh, shows some of the tips. So it's something that you can quickly go out there and, uh, and see and, and uh, uh, hopefully uh, uh, learn something uh, that you can quickly apply to your classes. Um, so we've got these 10 things here. Uh, uh, I wanted to just ask uh, you, uh, try to get a little more input again. What, uh, is there anything on here that you learned uh, while you've been doing more online and Zoom type teaching? Uh, or anything that's not on there that uh, maybe uh, you could, uh, share with us and you can chime in either uh, by turning your mic on or by uh, using the chat function. I'll go. Um, I, I have my students do a big group project at the end of the semester and um, I thought, well, I, I want to do the same thing that they're doing. So I'm not asking them to do something different. And that way it gives them a model of, of things to follow for their presentations. And so I chose the topic of awkward Zoom pauses <laughs> because that's, you know, these Zoom classes, they're great and all, but I'll ask a question and then wait and wait and never get anybody to respond. So it just is so awkward. So I thought, well, you know, I want to find out more about how to, how to get through that. And so um, some of my takeaways were uh, in attendance, 
ask them each to say one word, like their favorite fruit, to, to make sure that everyone speaks at the beginning of the class. And um, I found this, this uh, it's called wheelofnames.com. And you can put all the students' names in there and then click this wheel and it looks like uh, the Wheel of Fortune. Right. And then when it clicks on their name, there's confetti. <laughs> they loved that. And so that way I'm not calling anyone out, but it's random. And then um, one more thing is, at the end, I, I decided to meet one-on-one -on -one with the students because a lot of times they'll be more open than they will in a class. And I thought for next semester, I'm definitely doing that at the beginning to establish a good relationship with the students. And hopefully that will make them feel more comfortable to participate in a discussion. <laughs> Those are awesome uh, uh, comments and, and, and the perfect type of thing that, uh, that I love to hear myself and that I would love to share on, on this resource, for example, of, uh, um, you know, because others want to hear that as well. So, and tools like Will of Names, I had not heard of that. Uh, what a fun way to uh, randomly call on people. And, and, and then those hard won uh, lessons that you learned by trying different things and, and getting past those awkward moments and, uh, um, and uh, getting to know your students and whatnot. Uh, those are great lessons. Thank you so much for sharing. Anyone else have something that you've learned that you want to share? And there's a few here in the, uh, in the chat as well. Provide extra emotional support. That's number two. Uh, Derek mentions that. Karen says, I'm wondering if you, if how you think or link to web content that is locked to non-subscribers. Okay, thank you. Oh, by the way, I didn't even mention, feel free to chime in anytime with questions. Um, and uh, and that is a, a really great point. Some of this content uh, does have firewalls um, and, uh, and we may still, sometimes we may still provide just a little short summary and then link and then uh, uh, try to warn them that uh, you may have to sign up for a subscription to get to it. Um, uh, uh, we try generally to find uh, content that uh, is readily available. And so we try to avoid those that require uh, some sort of su subscription and whatnot. Uh, but we do have some of those that, uh, and we just try to warn the user that if you want the original, the full uh, um, content that you will have to subscribe in some way. Thank you for that question. Polly mentioned uh, allocate space for informal act interaction. Uh, I love that. So uh, um, have, giving a chance for the students to still have that interaction and on an informal level. Uh, my daughter just uh, uh, texted the other day and said, oh, I love my psychology teacher. Uh, today, uh, she asked us if we were feeling a little tired and worn down and most of the students nodded. And she said, I think we need a mental day today. And, uh, and, uh, and then she just let us kind of interact and do that. And we need to do that with our students from time to time. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe it's not a whole class period, but maybe it's just five minutes and give them that chance to interact. Um, Great, let's see. And you can read through the chat and see other options there, uh, rubrics and examples, uh, 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 such a great tool to use. Uh, Michelle uh, mentioned uh, flexibility and choice for students. Uh, created, she created a bingo card for the assignments. And, oh, that's fun. And, uh, and allow you to uh, uh, kind of choose and uh, and create. And I know Karen's done a lot of that in her classes in the past too. Uh, thank you for sharing those and please continue to do that. Uh, uh, so, um, so this is just uh, one example of uh, something within the strategies and methods. Uh, we also have assessment and feedback, uh, uh, various articles uh, and uh, we're, a lot of this is from the web oftentimes from learning or teaching centers from other universities uh, that uh, we may link to. 
<coughs> excuse me, I have no problem doing that. Uh, anything that they're willing to share, uh, we want to just go out and find best practices. And so, so we're always experimenting, looking for uh, different uh, content that might help. Now, we've tried to create this site to be user friendly, and uh, we've already been through a couple of iterations and we'll continue to do it. Uh, but it does have a nice search function that allows allows you to choose, uh, you know, any keyword and and it'll pull up uh, any article that may have that keyword in the summary and whatnot. Uh, so you can do it by a topic or by a method or or different things like that. We also have created a browse by topic. So uh, for the different uh, fields within business. Um, uh, so and not all of these have a lot of uh, content, but uh, you can go into marketing. And uh, if we felt that that particular uh, topic uh, uh, fits well in marketing, then, then uh, it should come up. Uh, although that's looking like, uh, I don't see marketing listed there. Typically under topics is where it would show. Uh, let's uh, do another one like business communications. So that one shows business communications. In news story, it, uh, it probably found a word about communication and whatnot. But like I said, these are just starting to fill in these different uh, uh, topics and whatnot. So that we hope that over time, as more and more content is added, that it would be an easy uh, search to go in under your field and find uh, content related to that. Now, we're always trying to encourage others to uh, request content. If there's something in their class, they know that they're going to teach a new uh, module in the coming year and they want to find videos about it or some reading assignment or news about that particular area. They can go out and request the content here, give a little description exactly what they're looking for and then we uh, 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 send our student team to go look for it. Uh, you can also contribute uh, uh, by telling us exactly what you would like to add to it. Like I said, for me, it's kind of been a nice little uh, uh, place to store the things that I like, and then I know I can easily go search for it on Learn Twice. And we're trained to encourage faculty to do that. And, and honestly, it's taking a long time to get people to buy into it or to even remember it. And I've uh, uh, joked with my team about that at times where sometimes I... Uh, think, okay, I want to do something new for this class. And I don't even think about learn twice, right? So it, it takes a while to get that in, in our mind to think of that as a resource. And that's going to uh, take some time. But uh, we try to uh, send out uh, regular emails without getting too uh, uh, ornerous uh, and uh, uh, encourage uh, them to share their content. And so you can uh, go out and do that. Then we have a little about uh, page that shows some of the, the team members and uh, uh, that we've had involved and uh, what we're trained to do. Um, so that's a, a basic overview of this particular web resource. And we've done other things I'll mention in a minute, but uh, I wanted to just see if you had any questions, any other questions about uh, uh, the web resource and how it's used. And not only questions, but if you see something that you thought uh, uh, you're surprised that doesn't seem to be included or that you think would, would add value, please uh, chime in with that as well. I, I had a question, actually. Um, my name is Pre Taylor, and I'm over in the English department. So I stare at your building through the window. Um, yeah. across the street and awe and, and awe and wonder um but I, I was actually looking at when you were showing the topics and like marketing was something and business whatever was another thing and finance was another thing so being a person who's not in the college of business um but is interested in possibly contributing or using this resource are those topics able to expand outside of of um business related topics or is it mostly generic things that you're you're asking for um as contributions yeah, thank you. And uh, I'm glad you brought that up because that is something I wanted to mention. I, I, our audience on this seminar, of course, is the broader university. 
And this resource, I, I really have focused initially on our department, then we expanded it to the college. And it is something that I would be uh, uh, certainly open to expanding it beyond a, a business uh, if we feel. And so this is all a big experiment, right? We're trying to see where we're creating value. And then if the value is there, I think we can expand beyond. But another option is for other colleges within their college to create their own little Learn Twice site that may be specific to their college, uh, to your fields within. And, and maybe we share a lot of the learn about teaching resources, but maybe some of the, the content resources are not uh, as shareable. And so um, I am, am open to broadening that community. And, and frankly, even outside Utah State, uh, uh, I would love, I have not uh, really tried to uh, promote it. I've shared it with others that have asked and whatnot, but we have not tried to promote it outside uh, uh, our college at this point. Uh, but down the road, I see that and, and see it as a possibility at least of, uh, of expanding to other colleges and or to other universities within the same fields. And, and it really will just come down to what is the most efficient way of getting that uh, uh, information out to the faculty. Uh, but if any of you want to do something similar within your college, and uh, please reach out to me at any time, uh, dan.holland at usu.edu. Um, and, uh, and I would be happy to talk through our process and what we've done and help in that and, uh, and explore the possibility of uh, of uh, combining or adding or sharing or linking or doing whatever that would make it uh, most effective uh, to expand the reach. Can I ask a follow-up question to that? Yes. Um, the other one would be looking at these topics, right? Um, as a person who's not in the college of business, I think this is a, an amazing resource. I'm curious as to if things are also organized by like, I would like an activity that you use to help students with uh, critical thinking. I, um, I would like a thing a resource that you use to help teach students how to ask a really good research question. Like those are different types of things. And so I didn't know if that was searchable by topic um, on yeah. this website as well, skill sets as opposed to um, topics in the college. Yeah, it's a great point. And, and, uh, and we would really like, we've talked about adding different types rather than just fields. And we felt like we need to wait just a little bit longer to get more content uh, and then be able to figure out how to uh, limit that. But I love that idea of, of different skills, critical thinking or creativity or some of those things. Uh, um, and, uh, and we want uh, uh, to make it easier to find those types of things. And uh, we just, we started to create a list and the list got so big and we felt that um, there would be very few uh, um, actually content pieces for each of those items in the list that we haven't implemented it yet, uh, but it is on our uh, future to-do list. We, we, need, uh, we need more content and, and we need a way to limit that list uh, as well so that it's just otherwise you're going through such a big list of topics that it doesn't really help. So we do hope that at least the search bar uh, you know, we could enter, say, critical, um, and I have no idea if anything will come up here. But, uh, and so I didn't do thinking, but so this says critical to your company's success. Uh, uh, but we could do critical thinking and see if something comes up. Uh, um, and, uh, and so hopefully the search does get you to where you want, but we do hope to add to the topics as well. Uh, Dan, I also saw in the chat um, there was another question on whether um, the resources from Learn Twice would include any book lists or recommended podcasts so far, or if that might be something you would want to explore for the future. I love that idea, um, and we have not done that. I think uh, those would be great content areas. Thank you for those suggestions. I think uh, podcasts and, and breaking down, uh, podcasts are so great, 
the hard part is, at least for me as a teacher, is that I love this uh, 30 minute uh, podcast, but I only want to use two minutes in class, right? And so that's one of the things that I would love for students to kind of go through and break out, uh, hey, from this point to this point, it's about this topic and, uh, and to create uh, kind of a, a nice little guide to that podcast. And then uh, various book lists would be fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so so really what this whole goal, and, and so I mentioned, uh, in fact, let me show you. I, I wanna just show another project real quick uh, that we've done uh, with the Learn Twice team. So that resource, that web resource has been uh, a big part of what we've done and, and uh, we're trying to uh, improve it all the time. Another uh, project that our team has created is this Huntsman School new teacher training that, uh, uh, and uh, the students uh, uh, did a lot of work going out, trying to find experts in teaching, uh, finding content uh, at the university that's already here, and, uh, and uh, doing surveys of uh, adjunct faculty and to see what kind of training they receive, which was basically nothing, uh, and, uh, and then uh, find out what they would like. And, and so we were able to create this, uh, uh, this online course. And it is just, uh, you know, the first version, there's a lot to improve, but it's way better than nothing, which is what we had before at the Huntsman School. And so now departments are able to uh, sign their new faculty up for this and uh, get them some exposure to some basic teaching concepts that, that often we just uh, uh, don't uh, uh, do at the Huntsman School. So that's been another project uh, that our team has worked on. And, uh, and so what we're really trying to do is create this learn twice community, this learning community within our teaching community. Uh, we're trying to create new value and, and that requires a lot of different experiments uh, along the way. Um, some things uh, that we've done already just don't seem to have uh, uh, any real value. Uh, others were still uh, holding on to a little bit and trying to communicate in different ways and, and going to see. And maybe all of this goes away in the next year or two if we don't create value. But, but that's the process that we have to go through, right? We have to experiment. Um, we talk about this in, in my entrepreneurship classes all the time. Uh, it's about trying new things uh, and seeing if there's uh, something that sticks and, uh, and creating this uh, opportunity to share uh, teaching methods and content and, uh, and improve our overall uh, teaching uh, performance. Uh, it is uh, something that we have to get more engagement for it to really take off because it needs to be a community uh, that's sharing with each other. And some of that is difficult, right? Sometimes we find a video we really like in class and we kind of don't want to share it with someone else because they might use it in a class and the student might see it and we feel that it might uh, spoil uh, you know, uh, the opportunity for us to show it. And I'm trying to get past that, uh, both personally and with others, uh, to think more in terms of sharing and, uh, uh, and encouraging that uh, we put even some of our best stuff out there and not just try to reserve it. But I totally understand, uh, you know, that we may want, not want to share everything. Um, it's about getting feedback. Uh, so we're trying to get feedback from users and, and find out what they like and what they don't like. We can go look at the analytics and see, uh, you know, what kind of uh, content is being uh, accessed and, and, uh, and how, uh, you know, it's being, or try to find out how it's being used. So we're always trying to get that feedback and improve. Um, the site has been growing the usage, a lot of it outside of Utah State. So some of that is just accidental people searching and it kind of leads to our site. Um, other parts are, are uh, within the university or within Huntsman School and we get feedback from faculty and whatnot. So it's a growing uh, process, but we're not there yet uh, by any means. So- um, Dan, you've got a question in the comments. Thank you. Uh, I don't have my chat up at this moment, so let me pull that up. 
it, they're asking if uh, you'd be open to sharing the new teacher training course for other departments to use. Yes, absolutely. In fact, uh, with only one caveat, you you have to uh, share ways to improve it. So <laughs> uh, if you uh, find ways to improve it, then let's just work together and do that. So yeah, reach out to me and uh, uh, we'll share any of that. Thank you for asking. Um Dan, it also seems like some other people would be interested in potentially joining um, because they joined from industry and would like to learn more about teaching as well. So it seems like a lot of faculty would be interested in having access um, to that new teacher training course as well. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and uh, just send me an email and I'll put you on as a student in the Canvas course. And again, I, I would love to have anyone go through it and then give some feedback of uh, of what was good about the course and maybe the weaker parts of the course and ways to improve it. Thank you. And I'll just add to that real quick too. While it is called the Huntsman Teacher Training, we did try to build it to be general for other departments in USU. Just some of the verbiage would have to be changed. Thank you, Tyler, yeah. Yeah, and so uh, that can go both ways. Uh, um, uh, that uh, you can definitely customize it for your own use or, or we can make it more generic over time uh, to uh, uh, eliminate some of that if needed. Yeah. So I've got a picture here of a, a can. This is a, a gift that my uh, son uh, gave to my wife. Uh, as you see, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's a, a soda can uh, that he wrapped in tape and uh, uh, has nice little uh, picture of trees and Merry Christmas on it and whatnot. And, uh, but I thought it was kind of a, a great example of teaching because when you look at this can, it doesn't look like much. Uh, but uh, if uh, you were able to pick up that can and I showed you that if you look through the hole there and, uh, and that you put it up next to the light that uh, the can becomes uh, a nice little image of a nativity scene. And uh, so my son created uh, out of this uh, piece of garbage, uh, something that's uh, really uh, 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 meaningful to my wife uh, and uh, creating this little image. And, but it takes uh, knowing that uh, you need to look in the right place and and it takes uh, some light uh, being shed on it. And, and, uh, and I feel like that's what teaching is, isn't it? It's about uh, helping our students uh, look in the right place to learn and, uh, and then trying to shed light on that learning and that it can become a, a beautiful image that uh, really impacts their life. And I think all of us love teaching because we love learning I, we love that process of learning over and over again and, and sharing that with others. And, uh, and I know that's a, a big reason why uh, I changed careers and, and uh, started teaching, uh, because I love that process and, uh, and love helps helping students see that, uh, that light. Uh, so I want to thank you for giving me this time to share a little bit about this. Uh, we're about out of time, but there's a few more minutes for questions or comments or thoughts or ways that you think that we could collaborate uh, uh, as a university and become a bigger uh, learning community. Any of those things, please uh, uh, chime in and, uh, and thank you again for this uh, uh, experience. I appreciate it. Dan, this is Denise Stewardson. I, I really appreciate the efforts that you're putting through in terms of um, highlighting teaching, you know, I was hired here on more of an administrative appointment with just a very small teaching role. And I literally begged to be part of the, back in the day, it was called like the new teaching academy or something. And I had to go to my department head. I had to go to the Dean uh, at the time it was President Cockett. <laughs> and she, I think she got tired of hearing from me and finally said, okay, we'll let you participate in that. But, but, but what you're doing, I think is, is a provost, sure, the provost is aware of this you know, the Huntsman School of Business is new teacher training because that's information that I, I think, I mean, Karin's nodding, yes, yes, yes. I know some of our faculty hires, they get that new teacher academy, but like someone like me, I was hired as a lecturer 
And I have an education background, which I thought put me way ahead of the game. And I was very thankful for that. But those of us who are coming in without that, to me, what you're doing is should be um, embraced by the provost office and offering this to everyone who's hired on in a teaching appointment. Yeah, thank you, Denise. And and I I, I have not, uh, um, this is brand new. So we really are kind of going through the first phase and trying to get a little feedback and improve it. And then we hope to uh, promote it a little more uh, and uh, certainly share it. I have had a couple of uh, other colleges or departments that have reached out and, and I'm certainly willing to share right now. Maybe I should, maybe it's better to share early rather than uh, feel like we have to get it a little farther because they'll help us improve it. Uh, so that's a great point. Uh, thank you. Uh, we'll do that. Uh, we'll start uh, getting the word out a little more and have uh, everyone uh, jump in and improve it. I'm on the faculty senate and I think that would be, I mean, we get every month we have um, reports and updates from different departments and um, initiatives, you know, throughout the university. So faculty senate might be a way to get this information out to a lot of different people at the same time, if you're willing or, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Um, uh, that's uh, one of the only times we get a big group of faculty all uh, uh, online together. Uh, so that's a very good idea. I'll do that. I'll uh, reach out to our senator and uh, see if we can get on the agenda. And again, um, I, I know there are others that are more expert in teaching than I am. And, and uh, um, we would love feedback and comments and ways to improve uh, that uh, course. Uh, um, we did reach out to others uh, through the process, but uh, uh, there's still lots of ways to improve it. So we'd love that. Any other thoughts or comments? Uh, Thank you, I was just reading through the chat there. Thank you for your uh, uh, feedback, your comments, and thank you for spending some time with us today. We appreciate it. Perfect, thank you so much, Dan. We really appreciate you uh, taking the time to share this, this uh, important work that you've been doing. Uh, so I'm sure you'll, you'll be getting your inbox filled with messages from participants today and uh and we look forward to continuing to working with you on this so thank you again dan you bet i'm gonna give you a virtual applause here <laughs> thank you all thanks for thank you so much for being here everyone bad submission Yes, if you attended the seminar today, remember to jump into the Canvas course and submit your seminar badge for the Engage level. <laughs> Thanks, Shelly. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Dan, that was fantastic. Hey, my pleasure. Thanks for the invite. I, I appreciate it. That was very nice of you. <laughs>